Hey, Katie. Thanks Hi. so much for coming to speak to Engineering 5 today. I really, really, really appreciate it. Happy to be here. So Katie, I know you're an industrial engineer. So why don't you first talk about what industrial engineering is? Okay. Um, so my favorite industrial engineering saying is that engineers make things and industrial engineers make things better. So that kind of sums it all up. We look at the whole system, the whole process, what's coming in, what's going out, who are the suppliers, what equipment is needed, and try and really optimize that holistic system. Um, a good example of something that you might have interacted with that you didn't realize was an industrial engineering thing is like going to Starbucks, right? You can go to Starbucks in Santa Cruz, in San Francisco, in Australia, and that cup of coffee is going to taste the same no matter where you are, because there's a ton of industrial engineers working at Starbucks, making sure that how they make their coffee is standardized. And that's a very typical industrial engineering um, activity. And what else can I say about industrial engineering? So it started out as industrial engineering, meaning that we worked in factories and we worked in manufacturing. But today, industrial engineering is in every industry you could possibly think of. So we work in hospitality, we work at hospitals, we work at amusement parks. Disney hires a ton of industrial engineers to optimize how guests come in and out of the park and how they get on and off rides and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, of course, we still work in traditional manufacturing environments, whether you're making a car or a soda or a toilet, you know, roll of toilet paper, right? Like all kinds of manufacturing. Um, we also work in agriculture, which I have some experience in, but just about any industry you can think of um, can benefit from hiring industrial engineers because we're process focused and everything is a process, right? No matter what you're doing, there's a process involved. Um, and the other thing about industrial engineering is there's a lot of sub-disciplines. So for me in particular, my focus is, and my specialty is process improvement or lean manufacturing. But a lot of industrial engineers find themselves working and specializing in things like ergonomics, which is how does the physical body fit within the workspace? Um, a lot of industrial en engineers will go into um, quality fields or reliability engineering. That's a huge sub-discipline for us. Um, human, uh, human factors, operations, research, and optimization is another really critical field. Supply chain management, you'll find a lot of industrial engineers there. So even within the umbrella of industrial engineering, there's a lot of sub-disciplines and focus areas that, that you can choose. Thanks for giving us the overview. Yeah. Okay, so now what I want you to talk about is your educational path. Start with high school and then your transition through Cabrillo. And then I know you went to San Jose State. So talk about that, like where you grew up, which high school you went to, why you came to Cabrillo, why you chose the major you did, or when did you know you wanted to go into that major? Why did you choose San Jose State? And then your experience at both schools. Thanks. Okay. Sure. Um, so I grew up here in Santa Cruz and I went to Santa Cruz High School. I graduated in 1999. Um, when I was leaving high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do for my career. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to go to school. It was just kind of, you know, not a clear path forward. And I found myself at Cabrillo. Um, probably my second semester at Cabrillo, I signed up for the intro to engineering class, engineering five with Joanne as my teacher. Um, and I did that because my older sister had kind of made an offhanded comment about, you know, this, this engineering career. And I knew nothing about it, but I knew that if you're good at math, um, you might be a good engineer. And I always really liked math from, you know, even middle school. Um, and so I found myself in Joanne's class and in that class learned all about what an industrial engineer does and a mechanical engineer and an electrical engineer. And it was really clear to me by the end of that semester that I had found my career path. 
Um, and I think we did an assignment in engineering five where somehow I found out that my grandfather was also an industrial engineer. So it was like in my DNA to, to go down this path. Um, but I also at the time was working for a construction company and I had I really liked working there and thought maybe I would consider civil engineering. Um, so while at Cabrillo, I took the surveying class and kind of, you know, assessed that out, but just felt after that semester that, you know, maybe civil engineering wasn't quite for me. And I really, really was attracted to the industrial engineering field. So I was at Cabrillo for a long time, like six years, I think, 2000 to 2006, if I remember correctly, uh, because I worked, you know, the whole time I was there. Um, I would go to school maybe two days a week and work three days a week and then work in the summer because um, I was supporting myself there at Cabrillo and um, just kind of had to stretch the whole process out a few years to get it done. Um, and then I didn't want to move away when I was kind of ready to transfer to that upper division coursework. I wanted to stay living in Santa Cruz. And that was a big reason why I chose San Jose State. Um, it was also affordable. Um, there was a transfer agreement in place. So I knew that, you know, with Joanne's help kind of figuring out what classes I needed, that that transfer process would be pretty seamless. Um, so to me, it was kind of, they were like my number one choice school and, you know, going there just um, worked out really well for me because I could stay here and commute um, on the Highway 17 Express bus over to San Jose State, which Joanne also told me about and gave me that tip. Um, which I hope they're still running because it is an incredible uh, resource because you can sleep on the bus, you can do homework on the bus, you can eat on the bus, all the things that you can't do while you're driving. Um, so you can get a lot more done in the day. Um, so yeah, I went from Cabrillo to San Jose State and I was able to get some scholarships um, when I made that transition. And so I went to San Jose State full time and did not have to work the way I did at Cabrillo, which was um, a huge you know, relief for me to just be able to focus and take like five or six classes a semester and um, really focus. And I just, I loved being at Cabrillo or, or at San Jose State because I was fully immersed in the engineering curriculum. And I just, you know, it reinforced what my choice, like I loved all my classes. Um, I loved the, the material that I was learning, the projects that we were doing it, you know, it really solidified when I, once I got there to that upper division coursework that I had made the right choice. Um, and, you know, one thing that I will say about that Cabrillo San Jose state transition that I sort of maybe messed up on a little bit is that when I applied for graduation at San Jose state after two years, I had to go a, a whole nother semester because I had failed to meet some of the GE requirements. And so I ended up in my last semester at San Jose State taking like a PE class and a philosophy class and no engineering classes. So students, make sure you check your GE recs before you leave Cabrillo. Um, otherwise, you might end up there an extra semester more than you planned. Um, and of course, tuition at Cabrillo is so much more affordable than at the state school. So get as many classes done at Cabrillo as you can. Um, and let's see, while at San Jose State, my first year, I did a summer internship with uh, Driscoll's out in Watsonville. And that was kind of my first exposure to using industrial engineering in the agriculture industry, which I loved. Um, I spent the summer working at their produce cooler and doing time studies on some of their warehouse processes. So that's me going out with, you know, a stopwatch and a clipboard and keeping track of all the steps in the process and how long each step takes and where we might eliminate steps or make a step faster. Um, and that was really great. That was a fun internship. I learned about Driscoll's and I learned about the produce industry. And then I went back to school for my last year and then ended up getting a second summer internship. And that internship I got through a connection with one of my professors at um, San Jose State. So that's another tip for you students. Uh, get to know your professors, make those connections. You're gonna need that network, you know, both when you're in school, but also when you graduate and you're ready to start 
looking for work um, and you're coming from Cabrillo, which is an environment where the teachers are so accessible and open door policy, come and talk to me during office hours, right? It's not always the case when you get to the bigger schools, um, but you need to assert yourself and you need to establish those relationships with your teachers because they will get you jobs. Um, at least that was my experience. Um, so that's tip number two for you guys. Um, and also just take advantage of those summer internships because you get to you know, experience different companies and different um, types of projects. And so my two internships were completely different. Um, one was doing you know, traditional time study, industrial engineering process observation work in agriculture. And then the second one was doing modeling and simulation work um, focused on uh, the air traffic management research industry. So completely different. And um, that last summer internship that I had at the airport modeling and simulation uh, company, I ended up going to work for them full time when I graduated. And um, that was in the fall of 2008. So December 2008 is when I graduated out of San Jose State. And then I worked at, uh, it was called Census back then. I worked there for about six years and did a lot of, built a lot of computer simulation models, did a lot of data analysis on, um, you know, airport traffic flow, planes taking off and departing from the airports. Uh, I did a, quite a bit of project management work at, in that position, which is another thing that IEs kind of naturally, I think, fall into because we're, we're typically very organized. It's easy for us to kind of see the big picture, um, to plan out a project and then, you know, check progress and milestones against that plan and kind of hold people accountable. Um, so I did a, quite a bit of project management work in that position. Um, and then in 2014, I got an invitation to attend a talk at um, San Jose State where a gentleman came and talked about applying industrial engineering in the consumable food industry. And I just, my heart started beating because like ultimately that was my dream job. I wanted to go work at like Dryer's Ice Cream and do process improvement in an ice cream manufacturing facility or, you know, like a chip manufacturing or cookie manufacturing company like Kellogg's or, you know, something like that. But I just always assumed that I had to move to the Midwest to get a job like that. And so um, I met um, a man by the name of Caleb Mabrook and he had a really small consulting firm. And I just went up to him after the talk and I was like, I wanna do what you do. How do I you know, get involved in your company? And he handed me his business card and it showed Santa Cruz as the address. And I just was like, oh my gosh, it was meant to be. Um, and so he hired me on as like employee number two. Um, and it was him and I for a long time. And eventually we hired some additional engineers and we had just a really small you know, boutique consulting firm. Um, and a big focus for us was bringing industrial engineering, bringing process improvement to the agriculture industry. So I did a bunch of projects, um, I worked a lot with Driscoll's. We did projects with farmers doing um, leafy greens like arugula and spinach. Um, we did uh, the big produce coolers, you know, looking at the workflow within those, those warehouse environments, um, lots and lots of different projects within that agriculture space, which was really fun. And I did that for about six years. And then last year in 2020, I transitioned to my current role, um, which is a dietary supplement manufacturing company here in, in Scotts Valley. And my title is industrial engineer. And um, it's a very traditional industrial engineering role where, you know, I get to go walk out on the manufacturing floor and implement process improvement, talk to operators, you know, and, and identify opportunities to streamline their work or make their work easier. Um, if we make these big batches of our products and there's uh, significant yield loss within the process, looking at like, where was the loss? Why did it happen? You know, how do we minimize that going forward? Um, and I've been there for about a year now. 
and just, yeah, having a ton of fun in that role. So recap, high school, Cabrillo, San Jose State, took me a really long time to graduate because that, you know, balance between school and working. Um, and then I've essentially had three, um, three jobs since graduating. One was in uh, modeling and simulation within the air traffic uh, or aerospace industry, I guess is a more generic term. And then two was consulting, engineering consulting in the agriculture industry. And then now traditional industrial engineering in a uh, manufacturing environment. Wow, it seems like it's so diverse on the things that you've done. It's really, really cool. Um, thinking at some of the projects that you've worked on, regardless of whether it was when you're one of your two internships or during the three jobs you've had, could you give us an idea of some of the projects that you really enjoyed or projects? Yeah. Yeah, so um, one of the projects that I really enjoyed from uh, the consulting job in the agriculture space was um, a farm a farming company hired us and they had installed a new irrigation system in their fields and were finding that the irrigation equipment was breaking. So they were having to you know, replace parts constantly um, and there's a cost associated with that. There's time associated with replacing those parts. And so we went out, my team, and um, observed, you know, how they were installing the irrigation equipment, how they would remove the irrigation equipment from the field, how the tractors would move in and around the irrigation equipment. We looked at the broken parts and identified the most common type of break and then figured out what was causing the damage. And, and then could bring in like the tractor operators and come up with solutions for how we were gonna prevent them from continuing to break all these parts, right? So looking at the process, study the process, figure out the root cause of the problem, and then focus on how are we gonna change the process or do it differently to address that, that issue. So that was a really fun project because I got to be out on the farm in my boots and, you know, being outside. And um, that was a, a really, really fun one. Um, and then I think more recently, I've been really enjoying uh, facilitating what's called a Kaizen event. And Kaizen is a Japanese term um, that comes in this umbrella of lean manufacturing, but basically what it means is rapid process improvement. And so I will take a team of stakeholders, like you know, someone that works in manufacturing and someone that works in the warehouse and someone that works in production control and all those key stakeholders, I'll bring them into a, a conference room and we'll spend two and a half days really focused on process improvement. And we'll spend you know, the first half of, of one day mapping out and identifying what is the process and then what are the pain points what is the root cause for those pain points? Let's bring some storm, some solutions, maybe go out on the floor and actually implement some of the solution ideas, see if they work in a very concentrated, rapid prototyping type environment. Um, and that has been really fun, really fulfilling. It's fun to see like actual change happen almost immediately because um, sometimes engineering projects can drag on and take a long time to complete. So these kind of rapid process improvement sessions that I've been facilitating at this new company um, have been really, really awesome. What sounds really neat to me is that you're engaging many levels of production or many, not just talking to engineers, not just talking to managers, but also talking to people on the floor. In both situations, both examples that you gave, you're talking to the tractor operator, you're talking yeah. to the people on the floor. And I think that's really great because they have the most experience dealing with whatever it is that you're producing. So I, I really think that's really a great way of um, trying to figure out problems and solving them. Yeah, that is key, right? Because I can't, as an outsider, I mean, I'm an engineer, I've got a, you know, good brain in here and I can look at something and figure out what's going on. But these operators live and breathe the work every single day. And often they're an untapped resource, right? And so if you can establish that relationship where they're willing to share information with you, that is how you really solve the problem. Cool. 
Okay, so in the I guess the last two questions I have for you is, how has your engineering degree impacted your life? Tremendously, um, right? I mean, I grew up in, um, you know, a single parent household and we just didn't have a lot of resources growing up. And, and so here I am as an engineer, um, I have a really, really good salary. I'm financially stable. You know, that is something that I always dreamed of. I feel like it was one of my biggest motivators for pursuing engineering was because I wanted to have a job where, or a career where I knew that I could get a job. I knew that I would get paid well. Um, and it was, you know, a bonus that I loved what I do, but that financial stability and security was, I think, a huge driver for me. And I have definitely achieved it. Um, I'm able to own a home here in Santa Cruz County, which is not an easy thing to do, but definitely my engineering career has afforded me um, that, you know, that um, benefit. Okay. Yeah, we hear that many times. It's really... <laughs> Okay, and then the last thing is um, maybe some words of your advice or wisdom to students who are just getting started in the engineering program. Yeah, so I think I covered a couple of them already, you know, um, get all your GE requirements out of the way at Cabrillo as much as you can. Um, when you do transfer to the school, to the upper you know, state or UC or wherever you end up, make relationships with your professors and don't be afraid to reach out to them and ask for support and build those connections because they become part of your professional network as you advance in your academic um, and, and in your career, right? Um, going to work as an intern, if you have that opportunity, I think is really key because you get to see what a, a typical job is like and you'll find what you really like and maybe what you don't like and that is all gonna um, allow you to make better decisions when you get to that point where you're kind of ready to leave school and, and start to go to work full time so I'd say those you know are definitely my my big tips um yeah I feel like I had another one in there but I I, I forgot if it comes to me I'll, I'll chime in again Oh, I remember what it was. Um, when I started at Cabrillo and the math and the physics classes started to like escalate and get harder and harder, I feel like I definitely hit a point where I started to doubt my ability to push through. Um, and, you know, I didn't, I talked to Joanne and I remember talking to Carlos from the, you know, one of the physics teachers and kind of had that little push to just like keep, keep trying. And, and I was able to move past that, that difficult point. And so if you go on to those upper division or those um, more difficult physics and chemistry and calculus classes, you know, don't be intimidated that the work is hard. Um, because from my experience, those were the hardest classes that I ever had to take and everything past that was much easier. So don't give up if you find yourself kind of hitting that point push through and you will be glad that you did. I promise. <laughs> That's such great advice, Katie, because I've had many students like that too, where they're just like, I don't know if I could do it. And you shouldn't start questioning yourself because those are just tools that you have to kind of get through and use, but you probably hardly ever use ever, <laughs> ever. physics. <laughs> or the calculus statistics, I, you know, that's the one piece of math that I pull out of my toolbox a lot, right. um, but I'm not doing integrals or whatever the rest of that stuff was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, great. Thanks so much. So thanks for telling the students about your path, both your educational path and your career path. And thanks for giving those tidbits at the end, um, words of wisdom. So yeah. And if you have anyone in your class that is curious about industrial engineering and wants to get together um, for a Zoom or a call or a coffee, you know, um, just give them my contact information and I, I'll be in touch for sure. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Thanks so much, Katie. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Good luck. Bye. Bye.